uh, that is the civilian side of the United States government, but also uh, the interaction with the private sector on cybersecurity protection. Secretary, the RCMP have identified uh, 10 illicit cigarette factories on the U.S. side of the Aquasas Helicopter Reserve, and there's a perception among many Canadians that the U.S. isn't doing enough to crack down. How are you cracking down? How are you dealing with the issue of Mohawk sovereignty with this Shiprider program, and how are your countries working together? Well, um, I can't talk to the cigarette issue um, uh, because, quite, quite frankly, um, uh, you're the first person to have told me about that particular issue. Uh, and I'm not sure that that would be the jurisdiction of the Department of Homeland Security. I'm fairly confident it would not be. But in any event, uh, in terms of Shiprider, uh, what this is about is make, making sure that we have Coast Guard uh, and Canadian uh, cross-designated on each other's decks uh, patrolling the waterways uh, together uh, so that if, for example, you have a boat in fast pursuit, if you get to the, if you get to the border, uh, the waterway border, they can't just, you know, wave at you as they say goodbye. Uh, but uh, those operations can continue. But it's like, what about the Mohawks? You have, there's the problem of your Mohawk sovereignty. So the Mohawk yeah, officers are not just on Just if I, I could uh, finish responding to that. On the issue of, uh, of the uh, tobacco factories in the States, uh, as the Secretary responded quite correctly, that's uh, directly the jurisdiction of the Attorney General, Eric Holder. He will be at uh, the uh, G8 security ministers' meetings and justice ministers' meetings that we're having uh, later this week in Rome, and I will be intending to raise that subject matter with him at the time. In terms of consultation on the ship rider with the, uh, uh, the, the Mohawks, there will be a consultation process in place uh, to uh, discuss implementation beforehand. That being said, our commitment to uh, uh, achieving security and enforcing the law is a very real commitment because that's in Canadians' interest and that's what Canadians want us to do. Secretary, could you deal with the question of Omar Khadr, please? Um, I understand it didn't come up in your meeting with Prime Minister Harper, uh, but I'd like to know what the administration, um, how the administration views his case. Um, would you welcome a request by Canada to repa repatriate him? What do you think should be done in the case of what many of his advocates call a child soldier who's wrongfully detained in Guantanamo? <coughs> Um, uh, no, that, that matter did not come up, and I don't think it would be appropriate for me to comment on any particular case right now. Thank you. Your, your administration is trying to figure out what to do with these folks. I, I'd like, and he's the only Westerner left. I'd like to know your position on his case. Uh, because uh, I'm not discussing the position of a particular case within a press conference. Can you, sure. no, can we you have explain time for to me, uh, one more question. Can you explain to me what your view is now of 9-11? <laughs> did Canada have anything to do with 9-11, and did you bring this issue up, or was it, was it discussed with Prime Minister Harper? It was not discussed. And let me say once again, uh, we know, and I know, that 9-11 terrorists did not cross the Canadian border. Uh, I regret that uh, the Canadian media only seems to hear that, uh, an earlier misstatement by me to that effect. So let me be perfectly clear. We know that. Uh, but what they also need to hear and what you need to hear from me are all the things that we are doing with Canada and will continue to do with Canada to further our joint security because we share the same interests. We share uh, the interests in the protection of our people. Uh, we share some of the same challenges, cybersecurity, to mention uh, but one. Uh, and uh, we share a friendship that goes back years and years and years. And so we intend to build on those things moving forward. And I think that uh, we need to can keep moving forward because the threat environment is an ever-changing one. Is it your as, as I indicated, that uh, will be uh, the last question, but I'll just add my two cents worth. Uh, I think the Secretary has made her position quite clear and she corrected early and we've accepted that and moved on. And we've moved on, I think, in a very strong way to uh, strengthen our relationship and do good things for the country. But part of what we're interested in doing in Canada is also ensuring that we keep Canadians secure from terrorism. There are very real terrorist threats, and some of them, we have to confess to ourselves in Canada, are homegrown. We just had the successful conviction of Momin Khawaja, uh, who was involved in uh, uh, Islamic uh, extremism, developed a remote detonator device, was linked to the London uh, bombers. That's evidence that we cannot ignore. Uh, we had the same with the first convictions of the Toronto 18 terrorist plots. So we're being very vigilant protecting Canadians from these threats. We're going to continue to be vigilant, and we work very well with our partners in the United States to do so. But I do want to caution people that they would be naive to think that those threats or terrorism are behind us. We saw 22 people die today, at least that's the latest count I heard, in a bombing in Pakistan. Terrorism is a reality of the world right now, and it's something that we must remain vigilant if we want to keep our democracies safe and secure, both here 
in the United States and around the world. So thank you very much. Thank you all very much. I'm Peter Van Dusen, and you've been listening to a news conference in Ottawa today with Canada's Public Safety Minister, Peter Van Loan, and U.S. Secretary of Homeland Security, Janet Napolitano.